Welcome to coverage of the 2004 Quality Hotels West Cork Rally. Uh, this rally is the opening round of the 2004 uh, 023 Tiles Southern 4 Rally Championship. And it's also the opening round of the newly formed Rally Sport Challenge. And we catch up with Suzanne Doherty, our reporter, to see what's happening down there before the start of the rally. this morning. It's the first round of the Southern Four. Last year's winner here was Kenny McKinstry, who will not be competing this year. Instead, we have Melvin Evans, Donny O'Sullivan and Liam McCarthy as this year's hot favourites. Look now at our contenders. To my right here, we have Melvin Evans in his 2000 spec Subaru. Moving on, then we have a Cork man, Donny O'Sullivan. He's driving his 2002 spec Focus. Reigning champion of the 2003 Southern Four, it's Liam McCarthy, a local man at that. And he is in his Toyota Corolla. And last but not least, we have Morris Gas in his Hyundai. The first stage here at Lagoc and Melvin Evans' first car on the road. He's acquired a 2000 spec Subaru, but the suspension settings are all wrong for these roads. And he'll struggle over these early stages. Donny O'Sullivan is another man out in a new car. He was out in Galway with it, but could only manage 29th overall after problems with the car on the last day. We go on board with Donny and see how he's getting on in this first stage, and it's a bit of info inside the car. You got the blower? Yeah, put on the blower. 81 right, 100. Left chit, 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 turn off the blower. What? I can't see nothing. Is the blower on? What's it on, down? I can't see nothing. Impressed. Wipe it. Right, and one left, and two right long over gravel. I can't see shit. Right, turn square left here, square left, square left. Right, square left, going down the window. Can you see now? Yeah. I'm square left, I'm lost in the nose. Right, over press 60, left into two right long over gravel. Easy. Despite problems with the windscreen misting up, right, Donny is still fastest right on this sta crest, stage, 60. and even though he does lose 10 to 15 seconds with that problem. Liam McCarthy has totally rebuilt and repainted his WRC Corolla and it's looking very well in his new colour scheme. He'll be second on the opening stages of the West Cork Valley. Morris Gass is another man out in a new car, but he's having problems adapting to his Hyundai. Uh, in Galway he was in early retirement with transmission problems and unfortunately West Cork will be a bit of a struggle for him also. By stage 3, Morris will be out with an accident in his beautifully turned out car. Steve Fleck has recently acquired an S7, a 2001 spec Subaru, but he doesn't have it here in West Cork, so he's brought out an older 555 version. This car he used himself before here in West Cork, and Josh Todd drove it on the event last year. But he seems to be going well enough here on the first stage. Dennis Cronin is a man that's after acquiring another new car. Uh, this is the ex Tom Horton uh, Toyota Corolla ST1 A5. He was out already in Galway with it earlier this year and finished 10th overall after a good run. Here in West Cork he's going much better and is in the top 4 over the early stages. John Dalton in the beautifully turned out and very fast Darian is a sight to behold in these slippery stages. The car is reputed to give 305 brake horsepower and with its light weight it makes it a very formidable combination indeed. Unfortunately John will go out in the first stage and this is the last we'll see of him. Another very very fast car, rear wheel drive exponent here is Phil Collins in his race bred escort with its big wing in the back. It's an unbelievably fast car with nearly almost 300 brake horsepower and tap. After the two stages in the West Cork Valley, after the first two stages, Phil will be in fifth place overall, which is brilliant going in very slippery conditions. This is Nigel Hicklin. Nigel Hicklin is out in a new car for the first time. It's an S7 Subaru, and he's taking his time to get used to the car in these very changeable conditions on the early stages of the West Cork Valley. Johnny O'Sullivan is a regular here in the West Cork Valley and he's now campaigning, he's very well turned out. Pete Doughty built uh, Escort WRC with quite a few seasons. 
The car always seems to go very well, and here is no exception. Johnny is going well over these early stages in West Cork. JJ Fleming is another man out in a brand new car. This is in the latest Subaru, it's an S9 version. And JJ was out in Galway with that car, but unfortunately he was out early in that rally with transmission problems. But here in West Cork he seems to be going much better. Barry Corman campaigns in McKin's Tree Run Subaru. But here in the first stage of Kilgark he gets cut out in the slippery conditions. Vital seconds are lost and he will also repeat the same uh, little drama down further on this stage. And our camera was there to catch him. He even stalls the car this time and he's encouraged by the spectators to get going and eventually he does. But vital time has been lost with those two spins. Peter Lloyd is a regular competitor in West Cork and in Ireland in general. But normally he's been associated with metros for many years. But last year he has recently uh, acquired this beautifully turned out Subaru and plays at WRC. He seems to be getting on with the car very well. And here we have Noel Redmond in the second of the Hyundai Accent WRCs on the event. The Hyundai seems to be getting very popular in this country with three of them here in West Cork. Unfortunately Noel will crash out in the first stage. Eden Pritchard is in the Subaru that Nigel Hicklin campaigned last year. It's the older 555 version. But here on the first stage he seems to be going quite well in it. This is Paddy White, the 2003 West Euro champion. Paddy White is campaigning his S7 again this year and he's going reasonably well here on the first stage in this car. And this is John Marvin, the sponsor of the new Rally Sport Challenge in his beautifully turned out Escort WRC. He'll be at an early retirement in West Cork, but he will be out again in the Sunday run with his beautifully turned out car. This is Keona Callahan in his uh, Group N Mitsubishi. It's his first time out in this car. He sets a great time in the first stage. He's fourth overall and easily leads Group N. Another Group N contender here is Mark Morgan. And he's Evo 6. That's the car that Bob Foden had last year. And this is Willie Fannin. He's breaking up the Mitsubishi dominance in his N9 Subaru Impreza. He's also a top runner here in West Cork in Group N. This is James O'Sullivan and Rebecca Walsh in the Auto 3 Tiles Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 7. This is their first time out in the car and we have a camera inside in this car and we'll go on board to see how they get on in their new machine. This is Joro Donovan in his Escort Cosworth. Uh, he has a small moment here at this first uh, stage here in the West Cork Valley. He's a regular competitor here in West Cork and he always goes pretty well here too. This is uh, Tommy Randalls and Diamond Lynch in their Biotech Escort. They're going well here on the first stage. And they're running in the same class as Phil Collins, but they'll have their work cut out to beat Phil Collins this weekend. And they're not helped by early problems with their car either in this rally. This is Gwyn Thomas. And he's a Puma GT, and he's co driven by Phil Harrison. And he's going well here down the first stage here at Lagarch and the Quality Hotels West Cock Valley. And this is Stephen Carway. Uh, Stephen Carway. Uh, campaigned an Escort Cosworth for quite a few seasons but now he's uh, one of the many drivers that has turned to uh, Sue Broom Praise uh, WRC. This is Alan Ring. Alan Ring was better known for driving a Peugeot 206 uh, challenge car but now he's upped his game to a brand new uh, Sue Broom Praise N10. Does it have been going through? Disaster really. Really? <laughs> Couldn't how be any worse. Really? How come? No, we've 
first time we bought this car to Ireland, the suspension is way too hard on it. And we spun on the second one, so we've softened the suspension off a bit now, and we're just way behind, so we can just catch up a little bit. Okay, and how about your tyres? How have they been going for you? Tyres are fine, like, you know, the other boys are on the same, similar sort of tyres. It's nothing to do with the tyres, it's just way too hard, it's bouncing all, all over the place. Okay. okay. It's gone for you? Not bad, not too bad. The first one, uh, we had a good steady run. Um, we didn't extend the car too much. We went a little bit harder on the second one. Um, it's, it's just difficult to know how quick to go, you know, because where where the water is lying, it, yeah. it could catch out very quickly. But uh, the, all in all, the tyres are working very well and Good. the car is behaving behaving okay. Good. And are you hoping that the rain dies off and clears off? Or? Yeah, I... I I wouldn't care to have too too much lying water, and but it's okay if it just stays the way it is. Right. Okay. And do you know how you, how it is that you're doing at the moment? I think we're in second position, in, um, ten seconds behind uh, Don Don Sullivan. Yeah, you're actually leading at the moment, so yeah, we're right a bit, su bit surprised to be honest. We're leading. The uh, the first stage was quite nice and clean. Stage two, there was a lot of standing water on it, but um, to be honest, we we drove at a very reasonable steady pace and I think that was probably the secret anybody that went a little bit hard probably overshot in junctions and stuff but yeah absolutely and how do you think your tyres are doing are they faring out okay yeah, for you? We're, we're using Kumo uh, wet tyres and they're working out fantastic yeah and Donia Sullivan is absolutely flying in this stage the weather now has got very dry and it's made conditions absolutely perfect for Annie let's go on board with Donny and Parnagel flat two right over bumps and a flat crest into flat right 500 keep it going flat right keep it going flat crest flat right 500 stay right in the middle of a crossroads 80 one right 80 and three left at the top breaking three left breaking at the top 60 that's strange that Donia Sullivan has just come right down back. requires Straight maximum road, commitment right and Donia Sullivan 60. with his core driver Paul Nagel certainly have that Evan Evans following Dorney or Sullivan through on this stage. Uh, this little van stage is uh, one of the best stages of the rally. There's quite a number of very tough junctions on it. There's Melvin going through. And here's Liam McCarthy. Liam McCarthy and his Corolla WRC. He had a bit of a spin and slight bit of damage to the back of the car and he's closely followed here by Dennis Cronin who has gained some vital seconds on him. Phil Collins here and he's marked Westcott. Going quite well here but there's still some damp patches this uh, despite the stages drying out very well. Uh, there's still quite a few damp patches at corners where the sun is not catching the road quite as well and not drying it out that quickly. There's Steve Fleck and he's older Subaru. Nigel Hicklin, he's still uh, getting used to his new Subaru Impreza but he's getting a bit quicker and he will continue to get quicker right throughout the event. Johnny O'Sullivan nearly overshoots here but he makes a quick recovery. This is JJ Fleming. JJ Fleming is much happier with conditions now. He didn't like the wetter stages this morning and didn't go very well in them, but he's a lot happier here on the Lislevan stage. This is Kieran O'Callaghan. He's still flying in Group N and he destroys a photographer here as well on the left. Splashes all that water and mud up in him. And this is Paddy White. This is the last we'll see of Paddy White here. He'll go out with. Uh, steering problems he had a bit of an indiscretion with the wall and ring in the previous stage to this and he didn't do his car any good at all he's been closely followed here by Willie Fennin Willie is doing well in Group N here in the West Cork Rally and James O'Sullivan in his Auto 3 tiles uh, Mitsubishi Evo 7 a bit of trouble here for James and Rebecca Walsh as we go on board with them they have clutch problems over gravel and bump. 60, 6 left over small crest and 4 right 80. Double caution, stay middle of bumper gravel at junction, 40 downhill and turn 1 left into narrow bridge. 
One left into narrow bridge, 100. It must be very frustrating for James O'Sullivan. The conditions are now ideal for uh, trying out his new Group N Lancer. But he's having gearbox problems here, as we can see, and his clutch is acting up also. Um, they will get the problem sorted at the end of the stage, but it destroys a very good run here on this stage, and he'll lose quite a lot of time. Turn here up and left. Don't overshoot. Clutch is gone. Gone. Yeah. 40. Four left and tap and right. 60. Gone. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get something started. Two over small crests into left, into five left, 40. So it's flat out, 80. So stay slightly right. 80, six right, 80. And four left over bumps, don't cut. 60. And turn hairpin right over bumps, tightens. Hairpin right, the short way, the short way. 60. Five left, slippy continues, 100. Six right, don't cut. Six right here, don't cut. 65 left over bump past the main into six right 80. Mark Morgan is still going well here in Group N. And his Mitsubishi Lancer looks the part on this list of van stage as he powers his way through. Gerard Donovan from Dunmanway is going fairly well here in his Escort Cosworth and is enjoying these drier stages a lot better than what he did this morning. Unfortunately though for Joel, he did a bit of damage to the back of the car after an earlier indiscretion on one of the earlier stages. That's the Group N uh, Lancer there of Gabriel Martin. Going very well in Group N. He was a late entry in this rally but he's glad I'm sure now that he was able to take that entry up. He's and the top three in the Group N category here. And Gwyndaf Evans goes through. He's a class top team runner, going very well in that class. And he's trusty Mark to Escort. And he's followed here by Alan Ring, another Group N contender who's getting quicker all the time as he's getting more used to his new Subaru Impreza. This is Tim Ball. Tim Ball is very wide here, going very well in his fabulous looking Darien. Closely followed by Anthony O'Halloran, the chairman, giving his full commitment as always in his Opel Manta. And Tommy Randalls is powering his way down here on the Liss Levan stage up to our junction. And as always, Tommy is a great sight to watch in that Mark to Escort, as is this man, Leonard Downey. Leonard Downey is very, very sideways here. Very spectacular driver. He's giving it maximum attack. Now that is committed driving. All the way through and sideways. Our last stage of the day. And Donny O'Sullivan will lead the West Cork Rally overnight. Quite comfortably. Nearly two minutes in hand over the Emmy Cap. go on board. Flat left over crest 170. One right 60. Turn the square right. Two left long, 200. Two left long is fairly flat. People going through it, people going through it, 200. Left in the turn square left. In the turn square left. Not easy. 40. One right and three right fast. 40. Wipers. Liam McCarthy is now in second place at the end of the first day of the 2004. Quality Hotels West Cock Rally. He's almost two minutes behind Donny O'Sullivan who's dominating the rally. Third is Melvin Evans and he's happy to be there after his earlier problems. But his car's not properly set up for these roads. While fourth is an absolutely fantastic performance from Welshman Phil Collins in his two-wheel drive escort. Kieran O'Callaghan is absolutely dominating Group N and is in 5th place overall. Fantastic drive. While JJ Fleming has considerably improved on his earlier position and has grown to like the roads very much since they've dried out in 6th place overall. While Willie Fannin is 2nd in Group N and is 7th overall in his Subaru Impreza. 
Johnny O'Sullivan had a fairly good day and is in a good solid 8 over on his Escort WRC. Steve Fleck is 9th overall in his old Subaru. And 10th overall, Nigel Hicklin is having a very good run now that the conditions have improved. Willie Power leads class 13 in his Darien and uh, Gwyndaf Evans is 2nd overall but would retire overnight with an injured hand when his steering kicked back them on an earlier stage. Second to Phil Collins in Class 14 is Tommy Randalls in his Dino Rod Escort. Class 15 is being led by John Hickey in his smoking Toyota Celica GT4. While Connor Kavanagh is running second to John Hickey in that class. Tony O'Sullivan again there now, followed by Liam McCarthy. Stage 12, Castletown. Going very well indeed. There's Melvin Evans, still driving on quite well, but still not happy with the setup of his car and knows that it will have to be completely revitalized uh, the suspension settings for these Irish roads around here. Steve Fleck is looking quite comfortable now. He's in the lower half of the top 10. As is Johnny O'Sullivan and he's WRC Escort. Phil Collins, he's going well here now again after his earlier indiscretion to drop him down to the lower part of the top 10 by the end of the rally. Nigel Hicklin is getting very quick today and he's moving up rapidly up the leaderboard. He's up to around 8th place overall now. And Gabriel Martin is second overall in Group N and looking very comfortable indeed. James O'Sullivan, much happier with the car today now that he's all these transmission problems sorted. And let's go in car with himself and Rebecca Walsh. Six left into six left, slowing 60 and turn square right over Babylon Bonk, don't cut. 
This stage looks very, very fast and seems very enjoyable from the driver's point of view. James has a big moment there but gets away with it and he held it well. Right. Yeah. And turn one right at the house at the end there. Anthony O'Halloran is flying in his Manta, going very sideways here on stage 12. And Leonard Downey is always spectacular to watch. Mark Kennedy is still going well in his Peugeot. And Wesley Daly and Philip Cross are contesting Class 11. Let's go to service and see what the story is. And we back at service and Suzanne Doherty talks to Donia Sullivan and asks him how he's getting on so far today. We're going okay with um, a problem with the clutch in the first days this morning. We dropped a little bit of time but other than that no problem. Okay. here. He's having a good run and let's we talk to him. Quite well in the first one I was happy enough with the first one. And the second one we um, we cut in in a corner and we burst two wheels and we we're just lucky to be back here. I coasted to stage three. Uh, we'd say we dropped a bit of time there, but we're back here in one piece anyway, thanks be to God. And do you know where it is here coming at the moment? I think we're still in second position, but I don't know what Melvin's time was on stage stage three this morning. Yeah, you'll so. find that out. So, And tell me, do you think the conditions are much the same or different to yesterday? Mm -hmm. Quite tricky. It's still a bit tricky, but it's drying out quite quickly now, you know? Last 12 was won by Peter Hughes, just gone through down his match to Westcott, followed home here by Gerard O'Connell. Anthony O'Halloran won class top 10 in his trusty mentor. Great drive by Anthony. Dave Slattery was second in that class and he's beautifully turned out Mark to Westcott. Very good drive by him, by the Killarney men. Class 14, of course, was dominated by Phil Collins, but uh, Tommy Randles would have been a lot closer for earlier problems, and he finished in second place at the end. While John Hickey won Class 15 in his Toyota Celica, and he was followed home by number 88, the Metro 6R4 of Paul Cooper from Ashton. The Historics was won by Joe Conley, his escort. Followed home by Frank Cunningham in his Mini Cooper. Anthony Ward was third in his Mark 1 Escort. Beautifully turned out car. Dan Minehan was fourth. Chris Nutt in his Porsche was fifth. And also a good strong finish for John O'Toole in his escort. And Martin Sheehan likewise in his Ford escort as well. And so to the top 15 of the 2004 Quality Hotels Westcott Rally. 15th overall Alan Ring and 15th Group N. 14th overall, Welsh visitor Peter Lloyd and his Subaru from praise the WRC. 13th overall is Eddie Gary and Kevin Kelleher and their 4th overall in Group N. 12th overall is Mark Morgan and he's 3rd overall in Group N and he's Mitsubishi Lancer Eva. Johnny O'Sullivan will finish 11th overall and he's been caught here by 10th overall man Gabriel Martin and Gabriel Martin will finish 2nd overall in the Group N category. A very good drive by him. Ninth overall is Barry Corman. He improved immensely on Sunday and he's a McKinstry prepared Subaru Impreza WRC. And unlucky driver Phil Collins he should have been a lot higher than 8 overall, but still a very good result for a rear wheel drive at the end of two days of running here in West Park. 7th overall was all that Steve Fleck could ever ask for in his old Subaru Impreza. 
he would have been a lot better off I'm sure if he had the new car but next year he will I'm sure be back for that. Sixth overall Nigel Hicken, very good finish for him in his new car. And fifth overall the Group N Victor, fantastic drive from Dunman Race Kieran O'Callaghan in his Mitsubishi Lancer. Fourth overall, very good result for JJ Fleming in his S9 Subaru Impreza. While third overall was not the result that uh, Melvin Evans was hoping, but it was still a good finish at the end of the day considering the very bad start he had. And second overall, Dunman Wayman Liam McCarthy in his WRC Corolla. While the winner of the 2004 Quality Hotels West Park Rally and a very popular winner of that, Donia Sullivan and Paul Nagel in the BioClear Ford Focus. Let's go on board and see how they are getting on through this stage. Five right long, 150. Flat crest and middle of a junction and a three right. So back at the finish, there's a rapturous welcome for Donia Sullivan and Paul Nagel. And they splashed the bubbly. And there they are with Donnie's father. Um, it's your first major Susanta, rally. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's our first ever win, really. Oh, it's fantastic. The whole weekend went perfect. We were very fortunate to get a, a big advantage yesterday because we had a few problems today, which cost us a lot of time, but we had enough. That's right, it was a puncher, I think. Was it in stage 14? Yeah, we had a problem with a clutch and we had a puncher as well, but we were lucky enough that we had, had the time in hand, you know. Fantastic. And are you going to contest in the rest of the Southern Four? Yeah, we plan on doing the rest of the championship as well, yeah. Okay, so you must be over the moon, feeling fantastic. That's didn't settle in at all yet. Didn't settle in yet. No, it'll be fantastic now. Well, listen, congratulations again and well done. Thank okay, you. Nice Cheers. 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 So the top 10 of the 2004 Quality Hotels West Cock Rally. A brilliant rally it was. Very enjoyable. I know we here at CMV Productions enjoyed following it anyway. Um, very good rally. Uh, just to run down on the top 10, the final top 10 positions. Uh, first overall, Donia Sullivan in his Ford Focus WRC, and he has indicated his intentions of contesting the rest of the Southern Four uh, Auto Three Tile Southern Four Rally Championship this year. As the second place, Liam McCarthy in his Toyota Corolla WRC. Uh, third was Melvin Evans. Uh, fourth, JJ Fleming, both driving Subaru Impreza's. Uh, fifth was the Group N winner. Uh, Kieran O'Callaghan in his uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. Great drive there from Kieran. Uh, sixth, uh, Nigel Hicklin. He'll be another Auto 3 Southern Four men. He's competing the whole series as well. And he was sixth overall. A good start to the season for him. Seventh overall was Steve Fleck in his uh, Subaru Impreza 555. Eighth overall, Phil Collins. Top uh, rear wheel drive men in his Ford Escort. Uh, ninth, uh, great recovery there for Barry Coleman. In his Subaru Impreza WRC, intent was Gabriel Martin. He was third overall in Group N.